Britain's king and queen meet the men who have been attacking flying bomb bases. At one of the British and American airdromes, the king held an informal investiture. The Nazis had hoped to divert Allied aircraft from the fighting fronts to the flying bomb launching sites, but they only learned the enormous strength of the United Nations Air Forces, that the Allies have plenty of planes to go around. Royal Party posed with the men who had just returned from the launching bases. Their attacks will continue as long as the need arises. In all operations, the RAF and American forces perform in closest harmony. At an American station, their majesties are received by General Doolittle, commander of the famous 8th Air Force. Here, too, were crews recently engaged against the flying bomb sites. As the king listened to first-hand stories of attacks on the Pas de Calais, bombers returned from the latest raids. Princess Elizabeth christened a flying fortress with the name Rose of York. The fort is the heroine of 13 missions, some to Berlin. Allied casualties in Normandy receive the most expert medical care science can provide. Two modern treatments, penicillin and blood transfusion, have cheated death in thousands of cases. Transfusions are given in ambulances and even on the actual battlefield. The legions of men and women who have given their blood have given life to these brave fighters. Here in the blood banks, the life-giving fluid is processed into plasma. Plasma keeps indefinitely and can be given to men of any blood type. In a single day, one plane flew a ton of plasma to the Normandy battlefield. On the return trip, the planes bring wounded back to the hospitals in Britain. Gangrene, from which millions have perished in past wars, has been conquered by the miracle of penicillin. Scientists are manufacturing this wonder drug in enormous quantities to meet the demands of the Allied armies on every front. Penicillin actually comes from mold. Spores of that mold are put into flasks. Here they feed on a sugary liquid in which, after nine days, penicillin is contained in solution. The liquid is drained off for further treatment, and the process of separating the penicillin from the fluid is achieved. Various solvents are used. Here we see chloroform being added. Eventually a stage is reached when the penicillin is highly concentrated, and the chloroform is drained off. Now only the drug solutions remain in the container. Files of this solution are put into a freezing machine. Rotated at great speed, the frozen and dried penicillin is thrown onto the inner walls of the glass. Eventually, the ice crystals are evaporated. Left in the bottle is a featherweight quantity of penicillin, just enough to cure a badly infected wound. Thousands of men, thanks to penicillin and plasma, will come home to their thankful families. A whole world of peace to come will reap the benefits of this great wartime medical discovery. Science has won another victory over death. Here are the first pictures of liberated Cherbourg. The Germans did everything in their power to make the great transatlantic port useless to the conquering allies. Here is at Naples, the harbor was littered with scuttle shipping. Dockside warehouses were destroyed. Already, however, American engineers are restoring all facilities. The story of Tripoli and Naples will be repeated. Soon, Cherbourg will funnel more and more allied men and supplies to the front.
Allied naval guns blast the harbor fortresses that held out after von Schlieben's surrender. American P-47s dive-bombed the old fortresses, and complete surrender was not long delayed. Havocs of the United States 9th Air Force continue their work of harassing enemy communication lines. The American pilots have made it virtually impossible for the Nazis to reinforce their Normandy divisions. The relentless air cooperation used so effectively in North Africa was a dominant factor in the peninsula victory. The American 8th Air Force, in just three weeks of ground strapping, immobilized 1,500 trucks, destroyed approximately 4,000 railway cars, and put scores of locomotives on the retired list. Making 20,000 sorties in three weeks, these same pilots shot down more than 250 Nazi aircraft. Meanwhile, General Montgomery was massing the men and machines for his great and successful attack on Caen. The British and Canadian capture of Caen gives the Allies still another vital port, the seventh largest in France. Damaged buildings in danger of toppling were raised along the path of the Allied advance. Way cleared, tanks and transport awaited the signal to move ahead. With characteristic patience, General Montgomery struck the final blow at Carr only when success was beyond question. It may now be revealed that Monty's able lieutenant, General Dempsey, is in command of the Second Army, an army that will continue to outfight the Nazis wherever they're met. 